Performing circumcision is a demanding time. <laughs> it requires a sure hand and a steady cutting surface. I'm Liz Braun with the Toronto Sun. Welcome to Generation Y, W-H-Y. I'm here with Anthony Fury. We're going to talk about a brouhaha in Iceland over circumcision. Certain physicians have signed a petition saying they would like to see the practice banned. Anthony, you're the one with a penis in this conversation. What do you think of it all? That's why I'm the go-to guy on this topic, apparently. I, I, I mean, wow, it would be something that would be met with a lot of resistance, I think, certainly here in North America, because it's, yeah. it's a very personal issue, and it can be a very religious issue. Yes, already rabbis and Muslim leaders are kind of up in arms in Iceland because circumcision is part of their religious practice. It's interesting, religiously speaking, I mean, here in North America, female circumcision is the political thing that people want to have banned and regulated against. They, you know, they don't call it circumcision, they call it FGM, female genital yes. mutilation. So yes. that's the thing that people are, are, I think, more kind of up in arms about here with religious communities. Uh, the male one, I, I guess it goes by different trends and, yes. and eras. It's changed over time. There are definitely, this is one of the things, weirdly, that goes in and out of fashion. Um, certainly there was a big uptick in circumcision after the, after the 80s when AIDS first presented itself and it was believed and still is held that uh, circumcised males are sort of more adept at fighting off STDs and that if you are circumcised, it helps prevent transmission. Mm -hmm. Now I think it's, again, a, a personal choice. There are a lot of psychological issues. You're supposed to look the same as your dad and one thing hmm. and another, but uh, I don't think it would ever fly in Canada. No, no, no ban on it. I mean, it, it's oh. certainly different now in that my, my children are quite young and all through the period, the, you know, the two boys, when you're in kind of meeting with the doctors and the lead up to the pregnancy and right after, I, they don't even really mention it as, as an option. It's not even a, a thing that's really discussed at, at any point. You'd probably have to bring it up and, and be proactive about it. And I think the rates are pretty low in Canada right now. I think they're probably dropping. Again, because these things go in and out of style. My kids are much older than yours. It was a different story when my son was born. But I had help from a neighbor, a nurse, who said she'd had nothing but issues with infection under the foreskin of her little boy and wished she had had him circumcised. So that helped me, to some degree, make a decision. Anyway, it's, it's kind of fascinating that they're considering it in Iceland. I hope all, all of our good North American viewers, both of them watching, will keep in mind next time somebody in the United States tries to tell women what to do with their uteruses, keep this in mind. Wow. <laughs> okay, Liz, now I want to ask your question on this story in The Guardian coming from the National Health Service in the UK, pointing out that children now struggle to hold pencils due to too much tech. That's what doctors are saying here. Children are finding it increasingly hard to hold their pens and pencils in the classroom because they're using screens because and so forth yeah. when they're toddlers. What do you think about this one? Well, that's an interesting situation. Children are losing their fine motor skills in their hands because they're, they're going like this and like this instead of going like this, right. but it's not just writing or coloring. They also don't play dress up, so they're not you know, mm. mimicking adult m hand motions. They don't use Play-Doh and they rarely use blocks if they're on a screen all day. So all of this could add up to dysgraphia or to this difficulty. Dysgraphia, what's that? Well, you, well, you can't write for okay, one reason. Yeah. However, there are a lot of reasons why a child can't write, not just one. But if you were to limit a child's screen time, at least you could be sure if they had an issue writing that that was not the cause. It's, mm. it's really, you know, this looks like a small topic holding a pencil, but it's a much, much bigger problem how children play, when they play, uh, and what screens have taken over for them. Well, well how, do you, how do you draw the balance and, and draw the line? Because, I mean, I have small kids, and when they're, you know, when they're going wild and manic, you put on the TV for 30 minutes so you can get dinner done and so forth. We don't have little, little screens for them, little, you know, whatever you call them, iPads and so forth, but other parents I know sit them in front of the iPad from a very young age. It's, it's the future. They're using it in the classroom. You use yes. it in the workplace. So they got to know how to do it but then they can't do it to their detriment. Well, if it's cutting into outdoor play, because that's another place where the hands are developed, monkey bars, mm -hmm. running with your friends, you know, climbing up to the slide, it sounds so fundamental, but it's a much bigger issue than just the screen itself. It's all about the changes in how kids are raised in this technological, in this technological time. So that's one more thing to look at. Um, 
if you have a babysitter or an individual in your house, your child may be getting more screen time than you're aware of if you're at work. If your child's at daycare, where they're socializing and they, you know, they go outside to play, maybe that's a better choice. It's hard to know. Good point. And broader societal stuff. In the book that I wrote about the grid going down, you know, if you lose technology, if you lose the electrical grid, you got to know how to do basic things like write. So if you don't even learn that, you're screwed. We got to leave it at that, Liz Braun, Anthony Fury, right here for torontosun.com.